Carol in here complaining about issues great and small for your entertainment. And today we're going to be talking about Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart for the PlayStation 5. Finally, a game that shows off the power of the PlayStation 5 with no other gen version attached. Man, the PS5. It took me forever ever to get this console but thankfully sony actually sent me an invite only order back in april and thank you so much sony it's an amazing console loading times are astronomically fast the games look fantastic and destruction all stars exist which you probably didn't remember until i just told you but now it's time for a no cross-gen playstation 5 exclusive that will sell the console at its best but is it all worth it at the end? Well, let's find out. Let's nitpick Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart for the PlayStation 5. All right, well, since this is my first PS5 nitpick and I have had it for a few months, let's briefly go over the system, just really quick. Reminder, if you wanna skip this, I have timestamps and chapters in the description. The PlayStation 5 is a honking beast. Seriously, I don't know how they got a ray tracing SSD system down to $500 when people literally fork over thousands for this shit. I really don't get the whole, why would you spend $500 on a console shtick when you spend double that on a PC? Now, sure, you can do way more with a PC than a console, that's fair, but you're gonna be using a gaming PC to, well, game on it so i feel like this thing's worth is about half the price of a pc around the same specs which is pretty much what the ps5 is i feel like for 500 dollars this is a crazy powerful system but that's assuming you get this thing from retail please i know you've heard this about a million times but no matter what no matter how cool this system is it is not worth spending $800 to $1,000 on it. Yes, I know I said the specs are comparable to a PC around that price, but as I also said, you can do more with a PC. PlayStation 5, you can only play games. And at that, games you have to pay full price for, which are $70. And, on, and honestly, I'm not even going to get into that here. You can make your own judgment about spending $70 on games, but you get my point. Do not spend over retail for this thing. No matter how hard it is to find, just be patient and wait to buy the PS5 at retail. Anyway, the console can run both PS5 and basically 99% of PS4 tiles. I installed a lot of PS4 games on the PS5 and I seriously can't tell the difference. The home system is very well laid out, though kind of bare. I swear, do companies just like getting rid of themes for consoles? Jesus. Though a benefit to having no themes is having the entire game's cover art take up the screen which is really cool and makes the systems and games just feel more premium and stylized. And when you scroll through the games or select one, it makes a sound that makes the console feel futuristic. It's really cool. Alright, enough of the console. Let's talk about Ratchet and Clank. I haven't played any games besides the PS4 game, but I am very aware of Ratchet and Clank's legacy, so I know a good amount of what I'm getting into. And not to mention the PS4 game was pretty fantastic, all things considered. Though, the writing was a bit stupid at times but i more so blamed that on the movie that was released which i actually thought was pretty okay despite people's problems with it anyway so let's do a basic story summary for ratchet and clank ripped apart i'll only talk about the beginning since this game is new and honestly i've been writing so many sonic story summaries lately i don't want to write a four page essay on this game story too ratchet and clank are back and throwing a party when it gets interrupted by the evil nefarious and his forces the blarg Clank reveals that the reason he wanted to throw a party was to give Ratchet a device called the Dimensionator, a device that can open portals to other dimensions. Clank proposes that Ratchet use it to see the other Lombaxes, which Ratchet never got to meet. But before they could do that, Nefarious snatches the Dimensionator for himself and opens to a dimension which Nefarious rules over, sending him, Ratchet, and Clank to that dimension, where they split up because of course they do. Clank discovers Rivet, a Lombax which is part of a resistance to take back the city from Emperor Nefarious. <laughs> And that's the basic story. The rest of the game is just trying to get Nefarious out of the dimension and get sent back home. There's a little bit more to it, but like I said, I won't get into it here. Alright, so let's talk about the game and we'll start with the presentation. Now keep in mind, I'm running this game through fidelity mode at 30 FPS just because I wanted to play this game at its best and oh my 
God, it looks fucking incredible. It looks so close to a Pixar movie. Like, holy shit. Are we at that point where licensed games can look pretty much like the movies themselves? Seriously, this is just making me think of all the possibilities. Imagine if Disney made a Pixar licensed game and made it PS5 Series X exclusive and it looked close to this. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be that far off from the actual movie. This just really makes me want to see an Incredibles co-op game now. For real, I'm not even kidding. Seriously, I don't know if this is Pixar level, but I think it looks better than the Ratchet & Clank 2016 movie to some extent. Wow! The art style is just perfect. The detail in the grass, the lighting, everything. It just looks perfect. Honestly, this game looks like store screenshots. You know, where they take a snapshot and kind of sharpen it to make it look better. Looking at this game, it doesn't look like that. It looks so damn good. The draw distance is incredible. You know how in games they will blur out the far away sections so that way they can make the game look prettier around you? Well, it doesn't look like it does that. Now, I'm sure they are doing that, of course, but it's just so detailed it doesn't look like it. Everything just looks incredible. It was so good. It was so good that at the end of the game, it felt like a cinematic climax. It felt like I was at the end of a cinematic animated movie and it was like I was actually playing it. Not to mention that the second to last world, this is the best looking world in the entire game. Hell, in video games, period. The lighting is just movie-like. That's it. This is next gen. This is PS5. Soundtrack is okay. Didn't really rile me, but I didn't really hate what I was hearing either. It was just okay. But now, the meat and potatoes. The gameplay. Let's see. How can I describe this? Did you like Ratchet and Clank PS4? You'll like Ratchet and Clank Rift the Party, and you'll like it more. You gather and buy fun weapons, you upgrade those weapons, you frantically switch them on the fly while trying to take out enemies and occasional boss fights, and there you go. Except there is one new addition. The carnage has been dialed up. Due to the sheer power of the PlayStation 5, there's particles and explosions everywhere. Much so that sometimes you can't see anything due to how much is on screen, but like in the cool action kind of way. Like you can get this weapon that is sort of just like a laser and just- And yes, that's as fun and frantic as it looks, by the way. You get a lot of guns in this game. And I haven't even got all of them at the time of this word, PogChamp, since that, since I wrote that in the script. You buy weapons by collecting bolts, which are so satisfying to get. You know that feeling in Crash Bandicoot where you just find a huge amount of boxes and then you just belly flop down onto them? You know that feeling? Well, it's like that feeling, except afterwards you get a whole bunch of bolts just collected and it's so satisfying to see them all get collected right before your eyes. Insomniac, if you just happen to be watching, which I doubt it, but could you just like have a button where you can hold it down and don't have to collect any bolts and it's for about 30 seconds and then you just collect them all after time is up? God, that would be so so satisfying. Okay, so we've discussed what this game does for the fidelity side of the PS5, but this game also does wonders for the SSD technology and the DualSense technology. The game shows why SSD loading isn't just to have no loading screens, ah no waiting cool, but this game shows that no loading environments is an actual gameplay feature. See I'm fighting this boss here and a portal shows out of nowhere and I'm teleported to a completely different level you will actually go to later. Just like that. N now one thing is that though this was so hyped up in the trailers, this doesn't happen as much as you would assume. It happens as much as it needs to, but it's not a thing that happens in every level. It's basically a thing that happens in like two to three levels. However, you can use the rift tether mechanics to teleport yourself over to other areas in a pinch. No loading, no stuttering, nothing. Just boom. But what's more impressive is these crystal things, where if you hit one... On it appears to have stored energy from the dimensional rifts. It loads another world in an instant. Boom! Just like that. And this isn't something that never happens again, neither. No, you can go back and forth as you need to. It's seriously incredible. But now the last thing this game does is with the DualSense controller. 
the, in my opinion, most impressive part of the console. Not only is it the little things where when you're going into a nightclub the controller rumbles to the beat perfectly or rumbles when you're firing a gun, it also uses the adaptive triggers to great effect to where when you're shooting your gun there's a little bit of resistance like you're pulling down on an actual gun trigger or when you're using the enforcer, a double barrel shotgun, that when you push the analog trigger halfway it fires one round but when you push through the resistance and push it all the way down you fire both rounds which is a powerful punch and you feel it in the controller's rumble. There's also collectibles you can find around the levels in the form of returning golden bolts. I only found like two to three of these in my entire playthrough and which is strange. I felt like I was exploring these levels a good amount so I guess they were really crafty about hiding them this time. Either that or I'm just an idiot. <laughs> Along with the main game there are two other gameplay styles. One where you control this kawaii robot glitch where you shoot down viruses, which are okay, but going up the slope the camera can get a little disorienting, and the other gameplay style is the clank puzzle sections. I didn't really find any problems here, I only skipped two of them. Not because I'm an idiot or anything, I just wanted to test out the skipping function to make sure it worked. Yeah. But all in all, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is a great game, and I think you should go and get it, especially if you have a PS5. This is one of the greatest showpieces for a console I've played in some time, even though it's one of the only launches I've been with. <laughs> but that doesn't change the fact that Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is a really great game. And if you ever get a PS5, definitely go pick this up. Make this your first game to get after Spider-Man Miles Morales. <laughs> but that's going to do it for me today. If you like this review, please make sure to like this video. Uh, share it around. Give me the support. I could really use it. And... I'll see you in the next one.